everyone. This is my second time explaining this, but I gotta shorten the video to where it's more concise and less uh, sidetracky. But anyways, this is The King's Dilemma. The King's Dilemma is a game where you have council members of each representing reputative houses that the king depends on to make decisions for them. So this entire game is based off of storytelling, narrative, and voting on what path the story should take. So for example, there is a group of peasants that are trying to burn the crops because they believe there is a curse on it. Do you let them? So there is a positive and negative. So positive, it will show out like, uh, you lose crop, but you gain morale. Uh, you lose mor uh, You gain crop, but you lose morale. Negative, uh, you lose crop and you gain knowledge or something like that. Something like that of some sort. But anyways, this game is a long game to ex explain. All right. So I'm going to try and get this real fast. Anyway, straight up the bat, we're going to start explaining. This. There is lots of houses to choose. Each house is have different types of agenda remember as the host uh, if you're playing this on uh, tabletop remember to unlock your houses to let to play and each player cannot flip over the houses to look at them you could only do you could only select one at random and start playing because each house has their own secret agendas so we're gonna sacrifice the house of Salad because it's a house of salad. Anyways. Alright, how am I going to start this? So, initially the game is going to start you off with 8 power and 10 coins. Like, the tabletop's already set up for you like that. It already set up um, the board right here. And then it has all of this right here. Remember, eat, and then remember to set up your game with each game with 3 powers in the middle. That will be important later. Okay, first I'm going to explain the board right here. The board up right here has the chronicle area, which is going to be where the stickers go to. We'll explain the stickers later on. There's the story card spaces, event area, king's death spaces, and stability tractor. Alright, so stability tractor is this thing right here. This is your resource of the kingdom. If this stability tracker reaches to the end of either side, that means the king abdicates. If you ever receive a death card for the king, the king dies and the game ends. And this also ends the game, like if it reaches to the bottom. I forgot to explain that part. That ends at one session. Your friends could choose to play one session or a couple sessions, but in this game, it's more reasonable to play multiple sessions. Each session will be one hour each. As you can see here, it's not all of these games. It's when you want to stop, remember. But this game has a story. It has a story to tell, kingdom to decide, and there is also mysterious stickers representing mysterious information about the world. Alrighty, let's get this started with. I'm going to explain the house agenda first. House agenda. There is Prestige and Crave. Both of them are fine. Crave is essentially like bad reputation, Prestige is good reputation. Both of them applies to the end game scoring system. So don't worry if you get Crave or whatever. At the bottom, in the middle, there is something called uh, extremist, opulent, moderate, rebel, opportunist, and greedy. Those are the six secret agendas. So here's the secret agendas. Each game, whenever you start, you shuffle it up. The lowest person with the lowest prestige, which is the lowest scoring of the, the games, which we'll explain later, removes one card, and then he'll draw the five cards and look at it. And then he'll draw one card for himself. So uh, I'll say I'm the extremist. 
And then I'll take all four of these cards. And we need to flip them, flip them up, and then yellow will have his turn. And then they'll choose on, choose, choose, choose. All right. Now I will explain the cards. Effect. So basically these represents your interest for that game. And these cards have an effect with this resource tab. So let's start off with the two up here opposites. Opulent and opportunist. So you, if you can see here the yellow board on the op, opulent, this yellow portion right here. That means your goal of the game is to get as much tokens above the above this line. If you can see in the middle, right here to right here, above that line is opulent. And the more tokens, which is the resource things right here, if you get five points, which is five right here, you get 15 points. This portion represents how many coins you have. So if you have the most coins by the end of the game, you get six points. The more points you get, and if you get rank one, then you get to marry into the royal family. <clears throat> And uh, I'll explain the point system there. So that's opulent. Opportunist is the opposite. So you want the most below the midline. All right, we're going to keep going. Greedy has two sides. So they want to have points above this and below this. Well, all or all of it could be at the bottom. That's also fine. But if it all of it's at the bottom, there's a high chance you're... you're your kingdom's already dead. So there's that, there's greedy, and also greedy gets more points for the coins. Think about it. Extremist is essentially, you count the highest one and the lowest one, and then just remember there is a counting system right here, so you don't have to go one, two, three. You'd be like, oh, 17 points right here. So that's what it represents by the words right here, 17 points, and then there's the coin ranking system. Moderate. Moderate wants everything between these two lines. One, two, between those two lines. If you do, you get more points. Rebel is the same as greedy, but you get more points. All right, so basically for these, each game you finish let, let's say I was a rebel, I finish one game, that's one X. And then like you keep going, and if you fill this out, you get two crave, and I'll be like that. All right, now on to the achievement portion. Achievement is essentially what your house power is. So if this flag is that, uh, this is a card that you have to find in order to receive one, one prestige. Uh, and then this, if morale is at the lowest, so free games in, and you have morale at the lowest, right? Is it the lowest? Yeah. Morale is the lowest at each of the end of the game. And if you check this free times, which is free games, you get this power, which is whenever you sign a sticker, you gain two coins. And then this is the same. And then open agendas will be explained later. All right, um, do, do, do. let's put everything back together. All right, I will go to the voting phase. But first, in order to start the game, uh, all right, that's fine. Um, there is a there is a card right here, all right here. Before you start the game, you play the prologue D one. So you type in D1. This is the prologue. Huh. All right, that's a little bit different. And then you read all this. After you finish reading, remember to put your card at the bottom. Right here, right? Oh, no, it's, uh, it's that symbol. So it's right here. This is the symbol. You see the symbol and this symbol? You put that right here. This is the storyboard symbol. All right, 
and before you start you shuffle the cards I shuffle the cards and then you draw one card that's how you're gonna do it all right let's begin I'll be sacrificing one card to display how the story how the voting system begins the holy attendant reports to us that a statue of the mother in the town of Neonok has been beheaded by unknown vandals. It can be repaired, but the famous artist Tariq, offended by the incident, offers to replace it with a monumental statue of the mother and her eight saint daughters. This new piece of art would bring spiritual relief to the town, but Tariq asks for an exorbitant remuneration. Do we fund a new statue? So, if you can see here, these are the indicators of what my what may happen. So we got a positive sticker and a negative sticker. And then we have negative morale and negative outcome tokens. <clears throat> so now here comes the voting phase. I have an entire notebook about this. All right. Uh, actually, we don't really, I don't really need the notebook, but uh, yeah. So remember in the voting phase, there's eyes, nays, and pass. So You can um, see whoever wants, um, actually whoever starts first will gain the leader token. So you just decide amongst yourself how you're going to decide who goes first and who goes last. And then you that will be your order of operation. So let's say I was red. I'm red. Uh, and uh, what was my agenda? I am a rebel. Remember your agendas, guys. That's your point. And you want to get to first place to get those points. So I read this card. Either one works for me. But in an order of interest, I decide to put free powers two powers onto I. Therefore, I received the leader token. The leader token will represent what you sign. So if there is any card that comes after this and you have to sign it, then you'll have to sign it. Remember that. Uh, and this leader token represents like when the voting phase will be over. So if everyone passes and no one gets my, uh, gets over than two or three, uh, gets over than, uh, we'll explain later. Okay, so red says I, purple will say pass. Purple will receive one gold coin, and then if purple wants moderator, they'll say, I want moderator. The moderator can only be taken once per turn. So like this entire round, no one else can have moderator. The next round you could have the moderator if you pass for it. So purple says pass, green will say pass for power. Basically, passing for power represents the powers here. If no one else passes for power, green will get all three of them. If someone else passes for power, green will get one. And let's say yellow passes for power. He'll also get one. And yellow says pass. Blue doesn't like the idea of I because he has a different agenda on his mind. And he'll say nay. Alright, so here's the thing. The moderator comes into play. If the two powers are tied to each other, two versus two, the moderator can rule upon who wins. But if blue takes another power for free, he will take the leader token. And that would reset the entire voting system again. So red will have another chance to vote. And red will add two more power thus taking back the leader token and then moderator will pass if you pass you can't do anything you're just passing regardless and then blue would abstain if he doesn't want to add or he could add power and be like hey uh, purple which would you want to vote i vote nay for me with that moderator power token you could bribe people game you could also bribe people to be like 
if yellow hasn't passed, pass, you could be like, hey, yellow, could you uh, put two powers onto nay or something like that. But anyways, uh, purple takes the bribe. And then as the round ends, purple has the decision. Either he took the bribe and doesn't care about the trust. And he could be like, I, just to spite blue. Or he could honor his words and say nay. Okay, so he said nay. That means the nays win. Blue's power tokens do not transfer over. So let's, oh, shoot. There we go. Blue's tower to power token will go to the middle. And remember, each one who passes get one power because they cannot split that last power. So the end of the round, you start to mix and match five tokens. And then everyone receives their coins into their little pouches. Uh, red, since he lost, he'll receive his own powers back. And since nays won, and remember, red, blue didn't go over the number, right? So we take the negative effect. So let's start resolving this. We're flipping this over. We're taking the negative. All right, here's that. Negative, negative three. One, two, three. And four because of something called um, what is it called um, rampart uh, it's, it's just like motivation something like that it's like uh i forgot the name oh woof de doof it's like uh it's like a snowball thing all right so i'm gonna explain this part morale was negative and right now it wants morale to go down if morale was white it would go down by three and it will turn negative but because of the fact that it was already negative it goes down by four and it gains uh, rampart or motivation or uh, I forgot the word uh, something like that something like that it gains that and then now we have to look at sticker 2 if you see here S1 so right here you type in S1 you get your sticker And then because red has the leader token, he'll be signing it. All right, let's take a look. Tariq's new statue in Neonark becomes so famous that all make a difficult journey to the town to admire it. And lucky for him, it's a positive. Oh. Well. Here's that. That's red. Um, decal red was a uh, salad Duke of salad he will stamp it right here that's red all right that is the voting phase hopefully you guys start to understand that portion and remember next round is the same it's the same all right, you just keep doing that until the scales tip over. Remember, this went down four. One, two, three, four. Just keep going until the scales go up or down towards the end, or you get a death card for your king. Uh, this thing resets. But the power tokens will remain. All right. On to the scoring phase of this game. 
Oh. And um, also, if the car doesn't say anything otherwise, you just continue on with the storyboard until it sends you off to another envelope. Which I don't want to look at it because I don't want to spoil anything. Because uh, this card is basically a one-time deal. This game is like a one-time deal or a two-time deal, whatever. But anyways, let's get on to the scoring phase. So. The scoring phase is essentially you start off right here, uh, House of Red, let's do that, and then House of Green, do that. Scoring phase is now opened. All right. So uh, since I am Red, let's say I was I was Rebel, and I managed to get all these things up here and up here. So I have free tokens. So I have free tokens right here and here. Uh, I get 17 points straight off the bat. Very nice, actually. That's my secret joint agenda points. After counting with everyone and seeing how much coins I have, I had the most coins. Coin system is somewhere around here. That's the voting. I think you get... Money ranking. All oh, right, right, right. Money ranking is on here. I got. Let's see. I, I'm the rebel. I have the most money. I have three coins, three points, and if I had the most power, I would gain two. I believe, right? Is it the most power? Majority of power tokens, two points. If I have the most power, second most gets one. And uh, House of Green, let's say he was a moderator, moderate. That means he only gained two in the middle, so he got seven points. And then he had second most coins. Like that, all right? All right, that's the scoring system right there. Remember now is that there is also open agendas open agendas are usually achieved through stickers so red did this he had the divine spark however it's a negative sticker remember that so for next game red will lose one power but he'll gain this sticker right here is it yeah that's a positive sticker i believe that's a positive sticker right where is the sticker? Sticker, 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 sticker. All right, this is the world building portion. All right, anyways, uh, red was first place, remember that. Uh, so this is the point system and our king abdicated. So let's say the king abdicated towards the positive section right here. So. That would mean the king abdicated at the top of the track and at the bottom of the track. So top of the track, since I am red, I get three prestige points. And you guys can read the table table line like here. And remember to sign your papers right here. Like I'll be like, ah, oh, free prestige. How nice. And I get one point into rebel, right? Because I played the rebel card. I played the rebel card. That's one point to dare. If you ever finish this, remember to put two craves. I'm like, I finished the rebel agenda. Two craves right there. And then remember to count your achievements. Uh, my morale was the lowest. Yes, perfect. So that's one X. Nice. And then let's see my wisdom. My wisdom was also the highest. Awesome. It's tied, but it counts as the highest. All right. Now we have the positive agenda. The positive agenda is usually distributed on, uh, on the next game because of your stickers. Uh, positive and negative. So let's say we are starting to set up for the next game. Next game, since this is a negative token thing, I lose one power to the general pool. But, uh, and then it gives me a sticker based off of what is right here. And since that looks like a positive morale ticket, that is positive morale. 
basically the goal of this positive and negative tokens is to get either first or second with it so I would want this to be as high as possible while these guys below it if this is as high as possible or second place high as possible you get three points second place you get one point if it doesn't go higher than that with a positive token this, this is the positive token you get zero points however if you have a negative token and this is the lowest you lose three points if this is tied with second place you lose one point remember that and these point systems count towards your positioning and whoever gets to name so red was first place on this one he could be like the king of red king red you could add any name to it and that is king red and you begin a new game like that Afterwards, as you continue on, you find some more mysterious t stickers, more stickers here. And then I have to add this too, is that whenever you get two positive and two negative stickers, that is the maximum you can hold. If there is more than, there is three negative stickers and one positive stickers, you can only hold on to two negative stickers and one positive stick, uh, two, two positive stickers. <clears throat> you cannot hold more than two negative stickers or two positive stickers. And or two plus. Am I getting that right? So let's say you have two negative, negative stickers, and then there's a third one. You gotta choose out of those three which negative stickers you want. Capiche? And if there's any like any special difference, different token, you could just uh, copy and paste for the other one. All right. Whew. That was a long explanation. We're not gonna. Re I'm not gonna explain the mystery stickers, but I will explain the event tokens right here. Uh, so there is the event area. If you see right here, the blue thing at the bottom right, right there, you see that. So basically, it's pointing right here. Usually during this game, there might be an event that happens, like a war, or bank, or some sort of uh, worshiping event. And it will require the players to do something about it. If they don't do something about it and another event token comes up, then um, they're going to be checking it. And then if something bad happens, it happens. If something good happens, it happens. Sort of deal. So that, these, those cards will come into play as you play along within this game. Oh, all right. I got you guys through the big majority of the section. And that is all you need to start playing the game. All you have to do is follow the, follow the story, make your decision, get your points, and win the game as the most powerful house in your kingdom. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.